Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our last mini lesson for chapter one. This one I've titled The Language of Anatomy, and I kind of alluded to this earlier um, in the last video that when you are learning anatomy and physiology, it's like you're learning a second language. Um, there's lots of new vocabulary and lots of new terminology, and it can be really overwhelming um, at the beginning. Well, it can be overwhelming throughout the whole thing, but when you get more comfortable recognizing the expectation, the goal of what you're supposed to be doing and it becomes less intimidating. So this, um, the, the language of anatomy that we're learning here in chapter one is um, going to be your foundation for a lot of the future structures you're gonna be learning. So it's really important that you get comfortable learning these directional terms, the anatomical landmarks, the body cavities, because if you know those well now, when you get to the application of those, say in the, the skeletal system and the muscular system, it's gonna be so much easier if you know those words. And I'll give you some examples um, as we go through these different kind of um, terms. So the first group of words that you need to be comfortable with is directional terms. So now that you are in anatomy and physiology, you have to be able to understand how different parts of the body, the anatomy specifically, are related to each other. So um, first of all, we have to define what's called anatomical position. So this little person here is standing in what's called anatomical position. Let me see if I can show it. Right. So anatomical position, you're standing, facing forwards, your palms are facing out, your arms are to your sides, and your head is facing forward. So this is anatomical position. So everything inside your body, on the surface of your body, the back of it, everything is now going to be described to each other, to everything else, when you're in this position. This is anatomical position. So whether you are a person that is in a car accident and you are crumpled down, you know, crumpled on the floor, it doesn't matter what your physical body position is in medical science and anatomy, all the body parts are going to be in relation to each other in that anatomical position, whether you are physically in that position or not. I hope, hopefully that makes sense. So um, most of these directional terms are in partners or opposite pairs. So we have superior means towards the top. We have inferior, which means towards the bottom or above or below. So for example, the forehead is superior to the nose. The navel, the belly button is inferior to your breastplate. Can't really see that on my, or you can say your chin is inferior to your nose or your chin is inferior to your forehead, okay? Um, or your neck is inferior to your head. Anterior and posterior. So anterior means towards the front, Posterior means towards the back. And you'll notice there's some parentheses terms here. These ones you'll see. Ventral also means anterior. It means belly side. But for us two-legged organisms, our belly side is on the front side. Um, and dorsal means backbone side, spinal side, like a dorsal fin on a fish. But for again, for us two-legged organisms, our posterior, our backside, is where our spine is. So those words can be interchangeable. So you can choose, um, they are the same for two-legged organisms that walk upright. Um, sometimes you'll see some um, body parts just tend to use ventral or anterior um, and they're different, but I don't really care. And your lab instructor won't make a difference either. So whatever you're comfortable with for those two words. All right, the next is medial and lateral. So we are symmetrical. So we have a midline, goes right down um, the center of our bodies. Things that are closer towards that midline are called medial. Things that are further away from that midline are called lateral. Right? And an intermediate is somewhere in between. Um, proximal means close to the beginning of something. So usually it's an association with your limbs, right? So here's my arm, it's attached to my body and my shoulder. Here's my elbow, right? So my shoulder, is proximal to my elbow, it's closer to the attachment point. But if I was talking about my wrist and my elbow, my elbow becomes proximal because it's closer to my shoulder than my wrist. Or my hand, my wrist is proximal to my fingers. Okay? So that's proximal. The opposite of that is distal. 
The further away from that attachment point or the beginning of something is distal. So if I'm doing my hands again, my fingers are distal compared to my wrist, but my wrist is distal compared to my elbow. My elbow is distal compared to my shoulder, okay? We don't really have proximal distal things in our head and our face and our trunk um, because there's no kind of attachment point. We are the center line. So proximal and distal, you're mainly gonna be seeing that associated with your limbs. Superficial is towards the surface, like your skin is superficial, your muscles are deep, um, or you can say your bones are deep to your muscles. Um, so close to the surface is superficial, deeper is deep, internal. That kind of makes sense. So those are our directional terms. So when you're looking at diagrams and it talks about, um, or it's, you're reading about a body part and it uses these terms, that's why it's important to get these down now. So then you can understand the reading as you're going along a little bit better. Okay. The next group is our regional terms. So this is a big collection of words. Um, and I strongly, strongly recommend you start working on these as soon as possible. Um, I'll give you some suggestions on how to best do that. You'll be working on that in lab also in the first week. So these are um, what we now call anatomical terms of your general body parts. So no longer can we call it our nose or our cheek or our shoulder. Um, we have these new words. So nose is nasal. Cheek is buccal, shoulder is acromial, armpit is axillary, upper arm is brachial, elbow is olecranal, right? So you're like, well, what is all this crazy words? Well, here's a reason why it's so important to learn these now, because when you get into your bone list in a couple weeks, and when you get into your muscle list in a couple weeks, you're gonna be learning, and your blood vessels um, later in 122, and your nerves a little bit later in 121, um, a lot of the things you're going to be learning are going to be using these foundations, right? So we have a brachial artery. We have um, a femoral artery and femoral nerves. We have a deltoid muscle. Okay? We have a gluteus maximus muscle. So you're going to be learning these things. And so knowing these superficial anatomical landmarks is going to be very helpful. Occipital means back of the head. Right here. We have a, a lobe of our brain called the occipital lobe. So when you get to the nervous system, you're not going to be learning occipital lobe brand new. You're going to know, hey, occipital lobe. I know occipital means the back of the skull. So when I'm labeling my picture of the brain, I will know that that's my occipital lobe. Um, so I'm not going to go through all of these with you. This is something that you need to work on. Some suggestions for how to do this is find a blank picture. You can just go onto Google Images and type in anatomical position. Um, and you can get some blank pictures, maybe print some of those off, or um, I don't have any with me here. You know those little plastic sleeves, um, like report covers, paper covers? Maybe print up a couple good pictures of your regional terms, like your anatomical position. Just put those in the paper, the plastic sleeves, get yourself a nice fine tipped um, dry erase marker, and then just label that, and then you can erase it, and then label it and erase it. So you don't have to make multiple copies of paper and waste paper. You could just keep labeling the same thing. So that's one way to do it. Another fun way to do it is get little post-its, right? So like the little baby post-its, make all these labels and sticker yourself or a loved one. If you have kids that want to help you study or if you have family members, spouses, stuffed animals, yourself, you have all these parts. You can put your sticker or, well, it'd be hard to put a sticker on your eye, but your cheek your sternum, your armpit, your thoracic region, your abdominal region, your coccyx is your hip, your deltoid, your occipital, right? Um, femoral is your thigh, popliteal is the back of your knee, patellar is the front of your knee, curl is the front of your leg, um, digital are your fingers. So if you make all these little post-its, you can kind of make a game, like label, see how fast you can label everything correctly and just do it over and over and over. Your goal, um, for next week, because your first lab quiz will be covering some of this information, you know, start working maybe five at a time. Just like, okay, I'm going to work on five. Let me label five until I can get those five and then add five more. And then you'll be working on 10 and then add five more and you'll be working on 15. It's always good to do a little bit at a time and just slowly build up. But your goal by next week's quiz is you should be able to take a blank picture. So imagine something like this front and back blank and be able to label everything without looking. Okay, so that means not only do you not need to know the words, but you need to know where they're going to go. So that should be your goal. You're not going to get there the first time, but lab will help you. Um, going through this lecture will help you. 
and then just repetition, repetition, repetition. That's a key part in um, the anatomy of this course. So there's gonna be lots of things you have to memorize and that little bits at a time and the repetition are really gonna be your friend in learning all those anatomical things. All right, I had just a weird glitch in my camera, my PowerPoint. Anyways, so hopefully it doesn't seem too weird on your end. So the planes and body sections um, are ways that we can look inside of the body from different perspectives. So the first one, let's say we're gonna take a slice right down the middle of our, our body. This is called the mid-sagittal, sagittal, or median section. It's gonna allow us to take lateral views. So like from the side views, if we slice right here, we'll be able to look from the side. The next one is if we separate front from back. This is called frontal or coronal section. This is gonna give us views from the front or the back when we cut this way. And then transverse is separating top from bottom. So this is gonna give us a superior or an inferior view if we're slicing it this way, okay? The next one is body cavities. So our internal organs, um, all of our internal organs are gonna be housed within these cavities. So we have two major cavity groups. We have dorsal, oops, let me get my pen here. We have dorsal and ventral. Dorsal means back, right? We knew that. Dorsal is on the back side and ventral means belly side. The dorsal cavity is, sub is subdivided into your cranial, which holds your brain, and your vertebral, which holds your spine. Um, your spinal cord, sorry. And you'll see they're continuous, so they're both colored orange there. So your cranial cavity houses your brain, is continuous with your vertebral cavity, which houses your spinal cord, and your brain is continuous with your spinal cord. The other largest cavity, the largest of the two cavities, is your ventral body cavity. So that's your belly side. So it is subdivided into multiple smaller divisions. So the first one, we're going to just draw a line right here. The diaphragm is kind of like the boundary between your thoracic cavity and your abdominal pelvic cavity, right? So thora thoracic cavity is above your diaphragm, abdominal pelvic is below your diaphragm. But within your thoracic cavity, we have smaller cavities even then. We have what's called the mediastinum, um, which holds like your esophagus and your trachea and some of your great vessels like your aorta and superior vena cava. Um, we have the pleural cavity, which holds your lungs, and we have a pericardial cavity, which houses your heart. So all three of those are within the cavity of your thoracic, which is also housed within your ventral. And then we have our abdominal pelvic cavity, which is below the diaphragm, and that is divided into your abdominal cavity and your pelvic cavity. Okay, abdominal pelvic or abdominal cavity houses most of your digestive, the digestive organs. Your pelvic cavity is your urina, urinary and reproductive organs, like your, your urinary bladder, if you're a female, the uterus, ovaries, um, if you're a male, your prostate gland, vas deferens, things like that. Okay, we have one more, our last slide for language of anatomy um, is your abdominal pelvic uh, regions and quadrants. So this is just abdominal pelvic. So we're below the diaphragm, just, I should use a different color because that blue almost kind of blends in. So here's your diaphragm, so it's below the diaphragm and it includes your pelvic cavity. So the first one is called your um, regions. It's like a tic-tac-toe board over your abdominal pelvic um, cavity. And we have these nine regions named for kind of their position. So we have our epigastric, left and right hypochondriac, umbilical, left and right lumbar, hypogastric, left and right iliac or inguinal. Either of those words you can use. And then if we take a look at um, the body with all the skin removed, we can kind of see where some of those organs are. So the reason why this is important is because what if somebody is com coming in complaining of pain in the right lower quadrant? Um, sorry, the right iliac region. We're not talking about quadrants yet. Um, this has your cecum, which is the first part of your large intestine, and it also has your appendix. So they could, if they have a tender right um, iliac region, the clinician or the diagnostician or the doctor, the nurse practitioner, who's ever meeting this patient might be thinking, hmm, could be appendicitis. Or up here in your left hypochondriac region, we have your spleen, which can get swollen and tender um, in certain viral infections, okay? Um, what's not shown here, but we do need to talk about are the quadrants. So let's see, I'm gonna use um, purple. 
because there's not much purple things here. So quadrants are just going to be like a plus sign right in the middle. Okay, so we have our left upper quadrant, our right upper quadrant, our left lower, and our right lower. Your textbook should have a better picture of that for the quadrants. So we are just going to use a plus sign to divide our abdominal pelvic into four regions, and these are our quadrants. All right, I think that wraps up our chapter one material. So thank you for sticking through this first round of mini lessons. Um, so again, this chapter does cover a lot. You have, I'm just going back through my notes, things that you can uh, focus on, your levels of chemical organization or levels of um, organization, your different organ systems to so make sure you're comfortable with your 11 body systems, their structures and general functions, your necessary life functions and survival needs, um, your homeostasis, so make sure you understand the difference between positive and negative feedback, making sure you're comfortable with your um, receptor, control center, effector kind of relationship, and then all of your language of anatomy that we covered in this, um, in this video. So make sure you're practicing your anatomical terms, your directional terms, your body cavities, make sure you're going over that um, as many times as you need to. To, make, to get to a point where you can recall and describe these things without looking because that's how you're going to be tested. So the more that you do that in your study time, the more successful that you will be um, when it comes to quizzes and tests. All right, so um, I will always be available during office hours, either Zoom or in person on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So please send me emails. Um, I will be around. I'm not teaching your labs, but I will be around during your lab time. So um, I might pop in every once in a while while I'm on break with my other class that I'm teaching down the hall. Um, so please um, approach me if you have any questions. I am happy to help. So I will see you next time for Chapter 2. Bye.